We will call this Labor Committee to order. A quorum is present. We will lift Senate File 2782 off the table. Senator McEwen. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, Members, as you know, um, we adopted the A5 amendment um, on Tuesday, and now uh, today is our day for de debate and discussion about uh, Senate File 2782 as amended, and uh, for us to entertain any any amendments people have. Um, I first of all have a technical amendment, the A10, with uh, the technical uh, fixes that were referred to on Tuesday. Um, um, and um, Ms. Fontaine and Mr. Olson could perhaps just walk, it, walk us through that briefly and, and if we could adopt that first before we begin more substantive discussion, that'd be great. Thank you. Mr. Olson? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of this committee. So on the first page of the A-10, uh, lines 1.3 uh, through 1.6, correct the workers' compensation fund that I mentioned uh, while, uh, during the walkthrough of the spreadsheet on Tuesday. Uh, lines 1.7 uh, through 1.33, so the rest of the front page, uh, puts the career pathways program in the correct uh, subdivision within the bill. Uh, it had accidentally been given its own subdivision. So those are th those technical changes. Ms. Fontaine. Yes, and on the... Uh Second page of the amendment at line uh, 2.2, uh, there, there, this change is within the combative sports article, and this dollar change is consistent with other changes that were made um, previously to the in the A5 delete all amendment. On line 2.3, I'm simply removing an errant comma. It, it is so it's just removing that comma. On lines 2.4 and 2.5, this removes a citation to a section that is not no longer contained in this bill. And then on lines 2.6 and 2.7, this is removing a comma between promisors and independent contractors. So it should read, pro read promisors, independent contractors. And then finally, I am including a title for ease for the engrossing office. And that's the A10. Thank you, Ms. Fontaine and Mr. Olson. Um, Senator McEwen has offered the A-10 amendment and we've had a description. Anything to add before we go to questions or comments? No, thank you, Mr. Okay. Chair. Senator Grunhagen. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, so uh, I guess I'll talk to council. On that 2.2 where it goes from 500 to 1500, does that leave more money with the uh, Combat sports, is that what the idea is, or going the other way? Um, Ms. Fontaine. Uh, Mr. Chair and Senator Grunhagen, so this is actually a dollar amount that's contained within, it, it's about the fee that has to come in, and it is with, that amount is with regard to the value of uh, donated tickets. So I think it would just change the, the way that the fee has to come in, but, and so this is just, about that dollar threshold for the value of donated tickets. It isn't actually like a fee change necessarily. The threshold has just changed to 1500 and that was consistent with some other changes that I made to the underlying A5 that I did not include, that were not included in um, the original delete all. So it's, it's actually not a fee change, it's, it's a dollar amount threshold for the, the tickets that are donated. I'm not sure if that makes sense. We could certainly have the Department of Labor and Industry come up and explain explain that, but uh, that is my understanding of, of the provision that this dollar amount is going into. It's not a fee change. Oh, that was my concern that it was a fee change, and you're, I'll trust you. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Any other discussion? Senator Pappas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have actually have the A9 amendment. Um, so would this be an amendment to the amendment? We're currently on the A-10 amendment. Oh, I'm sorry. No problem. No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> so without uh, any further discussion, those in favor of the A-10 amendment say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. 
the A10 amendment is adopted. Uh, Senator McEwen. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, and um, I uh, am happy to um, have discussion now with the members of the committee and um, hear any any amendments um, that our members have to bring to the bill. Thank you. Okay, Senator Pappas. Now's the right time. Thank mm -hmm. you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I have the A9 amendment, and it was in my packet. Is I assume it's in other people's packets. Yes. Um, so this is the result of kind of ongoing um, on the um, Nursing Home Workforce Standards Board um, ongoing negotiation. Um, so if we look at the A9 amendment, we're starting on page 15. After line 15, we're inserting compensation to define compensation more broadly with respect to the scope of the standards that the board can set. So we're, putting, we're adding that provision on compensation. Then on um, page 16, after line 15, we're inserting the language that says, the governor shall consider the geographic distribution of nursing homes within the state. And thank you, Senator Dornick, for bringing this up with me. This is really important. We assume the governor would do that, but we don't want to take it for granted. We want to just put a little reminder in here. Um, the, just a few technical things on page 16, line 27, just clarification to before the first compensation and insert board. Um, we want to distinguish the compensation of board members from the compensation for the purposes of board standards. Um, on page 17, line 22, delete as appropriate and delete other working conditions. This has been in kind of an ongoing issue of describing other working conditions. And um, uh, we're, we're trying to be more specific about what that means. On page 17, line 23, before the period, insert and may include recommendations under paragraph C. And we'll get to paragraph C in a minute. Well, actually, paragraph C now. On page 18, you'll see paragraph C. So it limits the standards uh, that uh, not about compensation to OSHA standards. Then on page 20, after line 9, get to page 20. Insert that variance and waiver section. So the board shall adopt procedures for considering temporary variances and waivers of the established standards for individual nursing homes based on the board's evaluation of the risk of closure due to compliance with all or part of an applicable standard. So that's kind of a little safety um, valve um, if, uh, if necessary. And page 22, we don't want any nursing homes in rural Minnesota to close. That's really important. Uh, then on um, page 22, line 31, I'm turning myself to page 22, line 31, we're deleting ensure, which is kind of a vague word, and uh, insert submit written docu documentation to the board to certify. That's regarding the training. And page 22, Line 33, it delete everything after the period. So that cleans that up. Um, let's see. Page 23, line 1, again, a clean up. Let's finish that sentence to delete subdivision to the board. On page 23, line 12, before compensation put in training, um, again, to distinguish that from other compensation. And then in terms of the travel expenses, we're deleting travel expenses if the training sessions are and inserting reasonable travel expenses associated with attending training sessions not held on the premises of the nursing home. And then finally on page 25, line one, delete working conditions and insert compensation. And that's the amendment. Thank you, Senator Pappas. Mr. Chair, I'd like oh. a roll call. Th thank you, Senator Umer Verbaten calls for a roll call. 
And I don't know if I move the A9 amendment yeah. to the A5. Senator Pappas moves the A9 amendment to the A5 amendment, and a roll call has been called. Discussion, Senator Grunhagen. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, th I, th I think I like this amendment. <laughs> I, I'm putting a caveat in it. <laughs> My question is, I thought that the omnibus bill was going to additionally stress rural nursing homes with some of the provisions it had in it. And it sounds like, especially with this board having the authority to make up these rules and not having to run them to the legislature. Um, but it sounds like if a rural nursing home is already teetering on closing, which I've had one close in my, in my uh, district, and I've, had, I've met with other ones, and some of them are barely hanging on, if I understand this right, on page 20, line 9, they will have an appeal process to the board to uh, waiver or have a temporary variance at least on the standard that the board comes up with. Is that correct? Um, Mr. Chairman, um, Senator Grunhagen, that's correct. Uh, okay, Mr. Chair. Yes, Just, oh, thank you. Okay, here's my question too. What if uh, it applies to a rule or regulation, federal or state, that's already in force that is causing them difficulty or problems? Can they appeal to the board on that? Do you know? Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I think in a, in, a, in a broad sense, I don't know that there's a, an official process, but in a broad sense to bring those concerns to the board, I think would be a really important you know, opportunity for them to be able to do that. <clears throat> Okay. Senator I certainly hope that's the intent because uh, having you know met with nursing homes in my district, they not only were concerned about additional mandates and requirements coming from the state or even the federal government, but also existing ones that are creating difficulty in them actually taking care of the patients. So hopefully uh, this board will be open with this amendment to considering some of those requests. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair and uh, Senator Pappas. Thank you, Senator Grunhagen. Any other discussion? Okay, seeing none. Those in favor of the A9, am, oh, Senator, oh, I'm sorry, roll call. Yes, so. Three hands. Uh, three hands, what's that? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I can waive the roll call. Okay. Okay. So roll call has been waived. Those in favor of the A9 amendment say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Okay. The A9 amendment is adopted. <clears throat> Senator McEwen, back to the original bill. Anything else to add before we open up to other members? Um, yes. Um, I well. Um, I also have um, in the A11 amendment, and as long as we're, uh, maybe we'll just go ahead and add that if we might, since. So Senator McEwen has introduced the A11 amendment. Senator McEwen. Thank you very much. Um, the A11 amendment um, goes to um, the section of the bill, you can see it's um, starting on page um, 59 um, in regards to the protections for meat and poultry packing and processing workers. And what the, uh, what the amendment reflects is um, more discussion and compromise um, that going forward um, to streamline this portion of the bill. Um, I know that Senator Putnam has worked very hard to, to figure this out and worked with the Department of Labor and Industry also to make sure that um, the bill is not duplicative of other parts of the bill, particularly uh, making sure that it's compatible with the section on ergonomics. Um, it takes out redundancy, so it really is um, making sure that 
um, things are as efficient as possible um, and, and not and avoiding any, any duplication. So this reflects uh, that agreement and the continued talks that Senator Putnam has been having um, regarding that bill. And I will take any questions if anybody has any inquiry, or we also have Department of Labor and Industry here who can answer questions. Okay. Thanks, Senator McEwen. Any discussion on the A11 amendment? Okay. Seeing none, those in favor of the A11 amendment say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The A11 amendment is adopted. Any other discussion? Senator Dornick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so I have the A21 amendment. Okay, Senator Dornick introduces the A21 amendment. I believe I said that right, A21? Yes. Thank you. While that's being passed around, do you wanna describe that for us? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So yes, this is, uh, just giving a, well, it's on page 16 after line 11, insert one member from the minority party and one member from the majority par party in the House and one member from the minority party and one member uh, from the majority party in the Senate who serves uh, on these respective committees with jurisdiction over human services or a designee to serve as a non-voting member of the board. So this is just basically giving uh, a little oversight and some some more expertise in the in the field uh, as they have their their board meetings. And uh, if the uh, senator or representative couldn't make it, they could have a designee to serve as the, on this board. That's the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Dornick. Uh, senator Pappas. Um, thank you, um, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for your, um, Senator Dornick, for your consistent desire to include legislators. Not sure who exactly would want to serve on this board, but <laughs> there might be someone. Um, the only thing I was thinking about is um, compensation, board compensation. Would the non-voting members then also be eligible? And I actually don't recall what it is, what the per diem is for board members. It's probably not a lot, but it, it could affect our fiscal note. Um, if we did that, so we might have to ask them to serve without compensation. Um, you know, legislators can request per diem for this kind of activity through the Senate or the House. You know, so that's just, do you have any comments on that, Senator Dornick? Senator Dornick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Pappas, for the question. Or, yeah, the question. Um, I know you were getting some uh, information from you. your um, research, so I don't... I don't have the answer to that. I know I serve on, I've served on the uh, agree, or let's see, the AURI board, and I never took any, um, but yeah. I, I don't want to presume that others wouldn't. Um, Mr. Chairman. Senator Pappas. Um, Senator Dornick, <clears throat> just a couple other thoughts if you're concerned about legislative oversight. Uh, just a reminder, the legislature confirms all the appointments to this board, and <clears throat> any rules that are promulgated um, by the board or any agency for that matter can always be overturned by the legislature. Um, so, you know, and then I think you have another amendment coming that asks for a report back to the legislature. So I'm kind of borderline about whether we really need to have this. Um, yeah. Senator Dornick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I think I'll pull this amendment. Let's go to the next one. Which would be the the um, doing the report? And let's see the uh, amendment number. So the A twenty one amendment has been withdrawn. So, Mr. Chair, sorry, I have another uh, Senator Dornick amendment. Uh, this would be the A sixteen amendment. Senator Dornick introduces the A sixteen amendment. And do we have that one in our packet, Senator Dornick? Oh, that be passed out. All right. So, okay. So while it's being passed out, do you want to describe that for us? This is just an annual report that would be brought to it's the, uh, by December 1st, 2023, and thereafter, uh, the executive directors of the board shall submit a report to the chairs of the ranking minority and majority uh, House of Representatives and the Senate with uh, jurisdiction over labor and human services. On it. it actually it, it lists the the exact things they want, but as I was talking to Senator Pappas, um, 
there was uh, some uh, concerns about doing some double things. So, um, so we definitely want. I definitely want to have the report as far as uh, I think it was the third one. It was the one that uh, we talked about too. So I will uh, let Senator Pappas um, address that. If she would. Senator Pappas. Mr. Chairman and Senator Dornick, um, I. I think the report is fine. Um, I just was concerned that, or not concerned, but just wondering if the department already um, did number two, uh, kept track of the number of nursing home beds that were taken out of service during the preceding year, and then I didn't know about number three. And just a reminder, when we don't want nursing homes to have to do extra work, they would be the ones that would have to report this information the average number of persons per month, travel and wait times for all individuals seeking admittance into a nursing home. I mean, that's where the department would get that information, would be from the nursing home. Um, I think the number of people per month, I'm not sure about the travel and wait times, um, that would, I think that would be useful information for the department to have. And if there's someone here from the department, maybe they could just, if they happen to be here, could tell us if they're already collecting this data. Uh, Senator Dornick, it doesn't appear to be anyone here. For so no one's coming forward. The Department of Labor and Industry? No. It would have to be the Department of whoever collects nursing homes, human services, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So they didn't know to come here, here today. Yeah. Um, Senator Dornick, how would you feel about if we just held off on that until we get more information and then we just take number one? Mr. Chair. Senator Dornick. Yeah, I, can, I, I would agree with that. We can. Yeah. So just the uh, to 1.7, you're saying? One, um, no, I think 1.8. 1 1.8, 1 .8, okay. So, Senate Council, if we just divide the amendment at, um, you know, 1.3 to 1.8, and that takes off a number two and three. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, members, Senator Pappas and Senator Dornick. Oh, health. So on line 1.7, delete the following colon, and then on line 1.8, delete paren one paren, and delete the and delete the semicolon and insert a period, and then delete lines 1.9 to 1.12, and I will provide this. Uh, my notes to the administrator for the um, committee report. So the executive director, Mr. Chairman, um, we're saying the Senator executive Pappas. director of the board will submit a report to the chairs with jurisdiction over labor and human services. Uh, or it might be health, too. I'm wondering is who oversees nursing homes? We're kind of out of our Purview here. Senator Liskey has a suggestion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I do happen to serve on HHS, so uh, I can kind of help with that. I believe DHS is in charge of a majority of this part. And then, yes, I think MDH does get involved a little bit. It, it's kind of a cross area where they, they would mm. both have to be part of this. So mm. does that make sense? Senator Dornick, do you want to add health then in there as well? Uh, yes. OK. So then. Senate Council, I believe, after labor, comma, health, comma. Yes, Mr. Chair and Senator Pappas, I, I agree. After, on line 1.6, after labor, insert a comma, health. Okay, no comma. Or we could say after labor, insert comma, health, comma. Um, Senator Dornick, you want to incorporate that into your amendment? Mr. Chair. I'd be acting like the chair. I apologize. <laughs> oh. Here we go. Sorry. Sorry. Just a little late. Hi, Please everybody. introduce yourself uh, and title and, and go, Thank you, Mr. go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, for the record, I'm Peter Butler with the Department of Human Services. I did want to clarify that for the A16 amendment, points number two and three would both be regulated by the Department of Health, not the Department of Human Services. Mr. Chairman and Senator Dornick. Um, so Senator Pappas. So if we're deleting two and three, maybe we don't need to have health. 
in there. So it would just be any actions taken and any standards adopted by the board to labor and human services, after all. Are we tracking? Yes. Yeah, yes. OK. Senator Dornick. So, Senator, or Madam Chair, so uh, I move that we adopt this. If you're okay with that, well, I guess. and maybe we should have Senator Senate Pappas Council read it again. Senate, Co Senate Council, we took out health. Ms. Fontaine. Um, Madam Chair, Senator Pappas, I, I was having a side conversation, so we have removed health from. Okay, so uh, that will not be then in the oral amendment to the amendment. Uh, so do, I can I can read it all again. Um, so on line 1.7, after on delete the following colon, on line 1.8 delete paren one paren, and delete the semicolon and insert a period, and then d delete lines 1.9 to 1.12. Okay, Senator Dornick moves the A16 amendment as, as amended and described by council. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the amendment's adopted. Okay. Thank you, Senator Dornick. Madam Chair. Senator Dornick. So I have uh, another amendment, the A17. Okay, Senator Dornick moves the A-17 amendment. We'll let that get distributed. While, you're, uh, while that's happening, would you like to describe it? Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, this is a, an easy one. So it's on page 59, uh, line 5, or 59.24. It's just increasing the uh, number of uh, employees up to, instead of 100, up to 500. Now, this has been a... Uh, question and, and has been worked on throughout the process and uh, uh, the 500 number uh, takes care of some of those smaller businesses which we're really concerned with uh, not overburdening them with, with some of these regulations so that is the amendment uh, Madam Chair and I ask for the support. Senator McEwen. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and um, Senator Dornick. I, um, I understand that this particular um, issue has been a part of the discussions with Senator Putnam and um, the industry and advocates and all, all the parties. Um, and as I understand it, uh, where they've landed is at the 50. And different numbers have been thrown around. Uh, yeah, sure. I think I heard 200 or 250 at one point. But it, it's meaningful to me that um, what I have heard from Senator Putnam is that the latest agreement, what they have, is the 50. And I'm not comfortable um, changing that in the omnibus because I know all of the work that went into those talks. So, um, and, and I also support the lower number just as a matter of principle myself, but um, my tendency is want to want to follow the lead authors of these individual bills lead in, in the work that they're doing. So uh, res with respect, I, I, I um, do not support the amendment. And uh, members, I would ask uh, for a no vote on the A-17. Madam Chair. Senator Marty. Madam Chair, um, I don't support the amendment either, but I want to point out, Senator McHugh, we already changed it to 100 in your A-11 amendment from Senator Biden. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I stand corrected. Much appreciated, Senator Marty and Med Madam Chair. Um, so yes, in the amendment that I that I just offered, I, I must have skipped over that part that, that it had already been changed to 100. So um, as amended, again, my, my same position stands. I don't want to um, alter that agreement. And I would ask um, respectfully for members to support um, the bill as we've already amended it, and to vote no on the A-17. Thank you. Thank you, Senator McEwen. Senator Dornick? Um, so I would, I guess I'd like to vote on it. So let's, um, Madam Chair, I move the, the amendment to vote. Okay, Senator Dornick moves the A-17 amendment. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, say nay. 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 Okay, the uh, amendment fails. Yeah, I got to go. Madam Chair. 
Senator Dornick. So if I did an oral amendment uh, to do 250, I know that was a number that uh, uh, was talked and, and I had some of the stakeholders were really hoping that there was one that actually came here and, and um, uh, talked about and they sent a letter and uh, just the concern for, it was 180 or whatever uh, employees and they, that's what they have. And so I'm, I'm just gonna make one more shot at the 250 um, number. Senator McEwen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Dornick. Um, again, respectfully, I, I ask members not to change this agreement and to change from the 100 number. So I would ask for a no um, vote on that oral amendment. Senator Grunhagen. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I just want to, you know, we had testimony about these large meatpacking places and how they treat people like a, uh, uh, a machine that just, you know, they, I think we even had testimony from one worker that they had to wear an adult diaper. They didn't have time to go to the bathroom because they're under quotas. And I certainly don't support that and, uh, and think something should be addressed. On the other hand, if we start getting down to the small and mid-sized meat packers, we've already got a, a, a uh, series of requirements on them, and we're passing, it looks like, a whole myriad, you know, sick and, pa sick and family leave and, uh, and a whole myriad of additional ones on small and mid-sized where we don't really have the problem. We, they're, you know, they treat their employees more uh, almost like family in many cases. And so what happens is if we pile this all onto the small to mid-sized meat packers uh, that fall into this category, and again, I prefer 500, but I'll compromise at 250, what you're gonna do is put them out of business. The big, the big company meat packers are gonna take it over and you're gonna have an exponential growth of the same problems that we're dealing with the big ones. I mean, I think you just have to, let's put it this way, if it continued to be a problem, we could certainly address that in a future, uh, uh, you know, legislative session, but to just go, you know, I'm thankful you went from 50 to 100, okay? Uh, Senator Putman, wherever you are, but I mean, I, he, you know, he didn't seem completely against it, and maybe he can still make the change yet, hopefully. But I just encourage members to think about putting all of these onerous situations on small and mid-sized businesses, and the result is you're just growing the expansion of the large businesses where the problem is in the first place. So I certainly would encourage members to support the oral amendment by uh, Senator uh, Dornick. Senator McEwen. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members, and, and I, I appreciate the discussion. I encourage um, people, if they want to continue this discussion, to take it up with Senator Putnam. Um, but again, I, um, I definitely uh, want to make sure that the record reflects that this safe work of places for meat and poultry processing workers is not going to put anybody out of business. These basic worker protections should be, should be in place and they will be helpful for not only workers but for business as well. I think that the arguments that, some of the arguments that we've heard are probably some of the reasons that Senator Putnam was uh, willing to go ahead and change the number. Um, and um, I know for a fact that Senator Putnam is very much concerned with making sure that uh, all of the businesses, and especially the smaller and mid-size um, businesses, are taken care of and, and don't suffer any negative consequences with this bill. So I feel very confident in that. And again, members, I ask that we respect the agreement um, that has been arrived at and uh, respectfully ask you to vote no on the oral amendment. Senator Grunigan. Uh, just real quickly. Yeah, let's surprise Senator Putnam and raise it to 250 members. <laughs> The other thing, go up to Fargo-Moorhead, okay? Uh, Fargo's a 250,000 population, second largest Microsoft uh, uh, plant or whatever in the United States, and Moorhead is somewhere between 30 and 40,000. 
and uh, that's what we're doing, members. We're simply uh, pushing so many mandates onto mid and small, small businesses. And uh, again, I appreciate the 100, and I, don't, I think something should be done for the large packing places that are treating people like a machine rather than a human being. But uh, I do think we should have a little flexibility here. So I'd encourage a green vote for Senator Dornick's oral amendment. Okay, I'll ask um, Ms. Fontaine just to read um, how uh, the amendment, the oral amendment will read now. So uh, Madam Chair, as an oral amendment, it would, it would just be on, uh, on page 59, line 24, delete 50 and insert 250. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Fontaine. Um, Senator Dornick moves uh, the oral amendment as described by council. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. 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 Uh, the amendment fails. Senator Dornick? Madam Chair, thank you. I move the A19. While that's being passed out, would you like to describe the A19 amendment, Senator Dornick? Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, this is uh, page 60, and it's just going to uh, delete uh, line 6031, 6032, uh, well, actually, the, on to 61.4. Or, no, I guess I, you know what, I think I did the wrong one. No. Senator Dornick. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the wrong one. Uh, let's see. I got so many papers here. <laughs> Get all these amendments on the last day, it's tough. Uh, so, let's see. Oh, sorry, it's the A18. Madam Chair? Senator Dornick. So I would I'd explain the A18. Um, 18 is what I was explaining when uh, I pulled the wrong one out. All right, that's being passed out. Go ahead, Senator Dornick. So it's page 60. It's just deleting the subdivision three, which is which is the uh, private line of action uh, part, and it's uh, to do with OSHA is the agency that handles this type of issue and why would we confuse the issue by taking a different approach only with the meat and poultry industry group. So again, OSHA is there, they're doing this. And so uh, we talked about streamlining earlier and not duplicating things. So I ask a, uh, for a yes on this uh, amendment. Senator McEwen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members, uh, I ask uh, respectfully for a no uh, vote on the A18 to completely remove any civil uh, relief um, to an aggrieved worker, seems to me, um, um, especially with some of the things that we've seen in the news this, this year in regard to some of the practices and some of these larger operations. Um, uh, this is a critical part of what this bill is and what it provides in terms of protections and relief for workers. So um, I ask for a no vote. Okay. Um, Senator Dornick moves the A18 amendment. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? No. 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 Um, the amendment is not adopted. Madam Chair. Senator Dornick. Now the A18 amendment. And this one, uh, I'm sorry, I'll wait. Uh, the A19? A18. Oh. 19. 19. 19, sorry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we've, got, we've, we've got the A19, A19. Um, already. Go ahead, Senator Dornick. So this one is, Madam Chair, this one is just uh, striking three years. I'm sorry, the, um, the, the, the bill here. It's page 61, line 2. Delete the three years and put six months. This is what uh, OSHA does, and it's extending this to three years uh, instead of the six months is definitely uh, not 
uh, in line with what OSHA is doing, and it just doesn't make sense to, to, to do this out to three years. Senator McEwen. Thank you, Madam Chair, members. Um, um, taking away a three-year statute of limitations and replacing it with a six-month statute of limitations is, again, severely limiting, um, especially when we're talking about a civil private right of action where an individual worker would have to contemplate whether or not they could even bring a suit. Was that even possible? They have to find out that that is, in fact, a remedy. They have to contact an attorney. The attorney has to do investigation. Um, I That would be... Uh, remarkable if that could happen within six months. Um, and I, so I, it just doesn't seem practical and it also doesn't seem fair uh, to a worker who would find themselves in that situation. So respectfully, I ask for a no vote on the A19. Senator Wiesenberg. Thank you. Does this work? Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. I think it's working. Um, it, it doesn't have to be completed, and is I guess maybe this would be a question for Senator Dornick. Um, it doesn't have to be completed in six months. It would just have to be first brought up in six months, correct? So that's correct. Senator Dornick. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. Okay. okay so to Senator Wiesenberg. Thank you. So again, I think six months is plenty of time, and it's an OSHA standard, um, correct, Senator Dornick? Senator Dornick. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, OSHA allows a maximum of six months to bring a complaint, but six months is. It is sufficient to, would be sufficient to do a civil action. So it's just copying what uh, OSHA is already doing. Okay. Senator Wiesenberg. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So yeah, it, it doesn't mean it has to be completed in six months. It just means you, you know if something happens, that's plenty of time to bring forward a complaint, I would believe. Thank you. Senator McHugh. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members, that's not true. Um, so this is the private um, civil action section of the statute. It's one thing to have a six month for an agency to um, create a file and to start an action, but it's a, an entirely different thing to put the onus on an individual worker who um, has been aggrieved and has been wronged and has to figure out what uh, possible remedies are there are for them, contact an attorney, and then that attorney, they might have to speak to several attorneys um, to figure out, they have to make a plan, and then that attorney has to do an investigation to find out whether the suit is viable. The, it's not the same. Um, so this is not simply bringing it up within six months. To file a lawsuit in a court of competent jurisdiction, um, it's kind of a, a big deal. You, there, there's a lot that has to happen there. It's not as simple as an agency um, making an official filing in six months. So again, I respectfully ask for a no vote on the A19. Senator Wiesenberg. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I guess I'd ask Senator Dornick again, is that within six months you have the time to start this suit, correct? Senator Dornick. Madam Chair, thank you, Senator Wiesenberg. Uh, you know, I'm not an uh, OSHA expert. I would s just say uh, to the attorney that um, I have concerns from stakeholders on this. It's, it's uh, very concerning that it appears, and you can answer this question maybe, if, if uh, there's other industries that have this private right of uh, action, or is this kind of the first time that uh, this is being used in uh, the meat and poultry industry group? Senator McEwen. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Members, um, I don't know the answer to that question in terms of other industries. Perhaps that we have some experts who can speak to that. Um, but this section of statute contemplates a person bringing a civil action in a court of competent jurisdiction. That means they're filing a lawsuit, okay, to, for relief, for damages that they've in, incurred as a result of violations of this statute. So it, it, it isn't as simple as them just raising the issue with an official or, or going to an authority to say um, what has happened to them. They actually have to put together a lawsuit and file it in a court. And so um, a, a six month statute of limitations, I mean, I'd have to go, I can't remember, I'd have to go back and look at the statute of limitations law <laughs> list, but six, six months um, is, is, I think it's usually at, at, a, at a minimum two years, sometimes four, sometimes six, depending on the type of suit that we're talking about. So, but six months is just not practical. Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, so I guess 
my, my point was that is a pretty uh, important fact of is this the only group that's being, uh, having this uh, on them. So that's something I'd like to know if this is, uh, as far as the, the meat and poultry industry, that the question that you weren't sure about. So I definitely want to hear what the answer to that is. We can do that later, of course, but I'm still asking for support of the, of the amendment. Senator McEwen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and um, I'm happy to, to try to dig up some information for you, um, Senator Dornick, but um, employers in our society can run afoul for all sorts of different reasons. There are many different types of, of lawsuits that can be brought. So this is, I assure you, the, the meat packing industry is not going to be alone in um, if they violate somebody's rights being subject to the possibility of a lawsuit. That's something that happens. But the spe in terms of a sp specifics, uh, exposure to different employers in different sectors for different types of violations, um, uh, perhaps we can get some uh, a list of information that can help you sort of contextualize what this would mean in the larger, the forest of, of this type of relief. Any further discussion on the A-19 amendment? Okay, seeing none, those in favor of the A-19 amendment say aye. aye. Those opposed say nay. 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 The A-19 amendment is not adopted. Got one more Se amendment, Mr. Chair. Senator Dornick. So this one is the A-20 amendment. Senator Dornick introduced the A-20 amendment. While that's being passed out, um, you can go ahead and describe it if you can. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is uh, page 61, the leading subdivision four. And this is the other government agencies, the Attorney General may enforce sections. So we're deleting that and it's got city and county attorneys. Uh, it's kind of my, my understanding that as I've talked to some of the stakeholders that uh, this, especially this provision right here was more so to be in the the pandemic area or a health emergency uh, when things are, uh, well, as we just went through, pretty chaotic. And uh, so that, and I, I did talk to Senator Putnam about this and uh, he didn't have time. This is, this stuff has happened so fast that um, he, we thought, I thought it was gonna be uh, deleted uh, as I was talking to uh, some others, whether we were gonna get an amendment and so I thought that this was probably going to be taken out. Um, so I didn't get enough time to talk to Senator Putnam on this, but uh, other than I just brought it to his attention, and I was going to get a text from him, but I didn't get one back. But at any rate, I think that was the original intent of this specific spot to be in uh, the pandemic or the health emergency part of the, uh, the bill. Um, Senator McEwen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Dornick, um, I appreciate the um, reference to discussion with Senator Putnam. That was going to be sort of my question is it, uh, where is Senator Putnam on this? Uh, without having heard anything from Senator Putnam about this particular section and, and the importance um, or non-importance of it, um, I, again, wouldn't want to make a change that would be so something that I, I think could be very consequential. Uh, and as an attorney, you know, I've seen plenty of situations where someone is looking for relief and we see different authorities say, well, this is out of my jurisdiction. Sorry, there's nothing I can do about this particular grievance that you have or this wrong that you have suffered because it's out of my jurisdiction. This is a state law issue. This is um, a local law, law issue. This is a federal law issue. So there's there's all sorts of situations like that. And and I don't know, perhaps that's not the concern. Um, but if it is, I certainly wouldn't want to delete this section and take away the power of the attorney general or um, city or county attorneys to enforce this if that is the intent of the parties. So I, respectfully at this point, and, and perhaps you can still continue those discussions with Senator Putnam about this section going forward, we can look at it. But at this point, I would ask for a no vote on the E20. 
Mr. Chair. S Senator Dorn. I, I would just, uh, final thoughts, OSHA oversees safety, so why would we have attorney general, especially city and county attorneys be given authority to enforce this section? Uh, city and county attorneys knowing more than OSHA, uh, that, that just puts a, a, burden, I think, a burden on them. Um, OSHA handles worker safety in the state of Minnesota, so it just would be, uh, I just don't think it's a good practice, and I think it's really supposed to be in the other section, but I will still ask for a support, and I will check with uh, and keep working with Senator Put Putnam on this issue. Very good. Okay, any further discussion? Seeing none, those in favor of the A20 amendment say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. 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 The A20 uh, amendment is not adopted. Senator Liskey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I would like to move the A12 amendment. Senator Liskey moves the A12 amendment. While that's getting passed out, do you want to describe your amendment, Senator Liskey? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, the uh, amendment here is not quite a DE, as I, there's a lot of good things in here that I like. There are some things that I have concerns about, and so that's what this is going to do. Uh, the first sections here adjust the appropriations uh, in the amendment uh, to match up with the deletions of certain things. Uh, page 7, delete Article 2. Page 14, delete Article 3. Page 43, delete Sections 12 and 13. Uh, page 44, delete Sections 14 through 17. 45, delete 18. 52, delete 26. Uh, 59, delete all of Article 6. That would solve some of the problems we were just talking about. Um, page 70, delete Section 2. And page 72, delete Article 8. Uh, the reason for this amendment is I get concerned <laughs> with, with all the things going on in this uh, omnibus bill here is there's a lot of things we talked about during this committee already. Uh, I'm worried that by putting these enforcements, especially on small businesses, we are now going to possibly be closing a lot of small businesses and putting people out of work. Uh, so that is the purpose of my amendment. Okay, any discussion on the A12 amendment? Uh, Senator Grunhagen. Oh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, thank you, Senator Liskey, for bringing this. It, 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 we need to have this discussion. You know, we have several letters of concerns, especially from the uh, employers here in the state, and even from the League of Minnesota Cities, the Association of Minnesota Counties, uh, they sent a letter of concern. And what seems to be happening in a lot of this bill is, uh, and of course, the Minnesota Chamber of Commerce, and again, I appreciate some of the things that have been adjusted. But it just seems, you know, and I'll quote from the uh, letter from the League of Minnesota Cities and the Association of Minnesota Counties, that we're changing verbiage and information as far as these civil lawsuits are concerned in a way that is redefining words that expands the net, okay? In other words, we're, we're trying to create language to expand the legal net of lawsuits as big as possible so we can catch as many different people as possible into the net to see who has the money that we can actually squeeze out of. The, um, uh, and that's basically, again, I'm referencing the League of Minnesota Cities uh, letter of concerns along with the Association of the Counties. You know, they just said that you're not focusing on the person who actually uh, should be responsible, it actually transfers responsibility to parties executing the work uh, to the party contracting. So again, members, I'm all for somebody making a mistake if there's liability, okay? Nobody's against that. But when we have language to simply expand the, the legal net as big, as wide as possible, to catch as many people as possible to see who we can squeeze the most money out of, I guess I do have a strong concern about that. I'm specifically referencing uh, Senate File 754 in the letter that was referred by the League of Minnesota Cities and Association of Counties. I could say some additional concerns from the Minnesota Chamber of Commerce, but I think you get the idea of what I'm saying, and I would urge a green vote as some of the rest of this bill needs to be better vetted and adjusted and balanced between the employees and the employer versus just going one, one direction, which uh, is going to cause a lot more lawsuits, in my opinion, unnecessarily, and many of them, in some cases, frivolous. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any further discussion on the A12 amendment? Senator McEwen, anything to add? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair and uh, members, Senator Litsky. Um, I, I mean, obviously, this is and it need, uh, a deletion of large sections of the bill, including the agriculture and food processing workers protections, the nursing home board, the Safe Workplaces for Meat and Poultry Processing Worker Act, um, and the reform on indemnification agreements. Um, so uh, amongst a lot of other um, reductions in um, the monies needed to make sure that the bill is meaningful in its enactment. Um, reduction, elimination of sections <laughs> that assess fines, things like that. So um, I, I, of course, am going to ask people to vote no on the A12. Um, it um, destroys the bill. Um, and um, I, I just, I really want to implore us um, to work together and to be serious about this work that we're engaged in. It's, um, and I'm not trying to accuse, um, I know that it, it is meaningful to, to bring a sort of half delete all bill just to sort of prove a point. Um, but I, but I, there are very serious problems um, in our, some of our workplaces that all of the bills that we have heard over the course of this session have made earnest attempts to address and they are important. People have been working on some of them over years and years, hoping that they would have an opportunity to provide some protections um, for themselves, their coworkers, their neighbors, Minnesotans um, who need more protections in their workplaces. And so, um, and these, and it does, it does represent great compromise. I know one compromise I can say right off the bat is that um, Meat Processing uh, Worker Act, that started out with a zero number where we were asking for a 500 today. So the compromises have been made. They have been made. And they are, have been made out of a lot of work, bipartisan work, work from business interests, work from workers, um, representatives, advocates, and um, so I, I, do, I do take this work very seriously. I am very proud of the content of this bill and all of the compromise that it has taken to get here. Um, my first two years in the Senate, this is my third year, we didn't hear anything like this. We didn't hear, we didn't hear bills like this. So people have been waiting a long time. And we're gonna make sure that workers are protected. So I'm gonna ask people to vote no on the A12, thank you. Thank you, Senator McEwen. Uh, Senator Liskey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just try and get the last word on my own amendment. Um, <clears throat> I urge a yes vote. Again, I, I agree. I think there's been a lot of compromise on a lot of things in here, and that's, that's why I've left quite a bit through it. I understand the feelings of maybe you don't feel like I'm taking it seriously. Um, the things that I am taking seriously are the ones that we've heard lots of concern. And honestly, I don't think we've had as much compromise on parts of it. I think the meat, pa meat processing, maybe that, you are absolutely correct. Maybe we strike that out of my amendment here. But my concern is there's a lot of stuff in here that we haven't made any real concerted efforts uh, to, to, you know, become, come together on. Um, and as Senator Grunhagen likes to say, find peace in the valley. Uh, so that's why I brought this amendment forward. I urge a green vote. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to request a roll call on the um, A12. A roll call has been called. On the A12 amendment, Chair Hostchild. Nay. Senator McEwen. Nay. Senator Dornick. Yes. Senator Grunhagen. Yes. Senator Kupek. Senator Liskey. Yes. Senator Marty. No. Senator Umu Verbaden. No. Senator Pappas. No. Senator Wiesenberg. Yes. Senator Kupek. Four yes, five no. Four yes, five no. 
The A12 amendment is not adopted. Senator Grunhagen. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have the A13 I'd like to offer amendment. Senator Grunhagen introduces the A13 amendment. While that's getting passed out, do you want to go ahead and describe your amendment? Okay, sorry. Um, basically what it does, it does strike the private right of actions in Article 2, 3, and 6. Additionally, in the same paragraph, it talks about the inflation, inflationary increase for fines in Article 5, Section 7. And it deletes both the private right of action as well as the inflationary increase for fines. I'm a strong believer that if you want to increase fines, you should come, it shouldn't be done just automatically. It should have to come back to the legislative process. And then we can assess how the fines have worked. We can have testimony from the department and the need for additional or reduction of fines rather than just automatic increases each year. Um, so I'm open to dividing the amendment, okay, <laughs> between inflationary increases, which I'd like to strike, and I understand the private right of action. And here's, I know you're not going to be excited about this, okay, uh, uh, Senator McEwen, but here's what I'm trying to say. When I look at this bill, I, you know, and I talked about some of it in the past based on the concerns from the counties, uh, League of Minnesota Cities, and even from the Chamber of Commerce, and uh, I also think from uh, John Schutte, if I remember right, he always testified. I don't have his letter right in front of me. Hey, I'm the first one who will agree there are some abuses, especially with large employers, uh, like we discussed before. And we need to address that. But number one, we need to be focused. Number two, there needs to be, and this is where I'd encourage you, Senator McEwen, you know there's some people that will game the system. And when I look at this bill, it's all for the employer's opportunity and very little uh, balance or, uh, to the, um, for the employer. It's all for the employee. And you're going to have a certain percentage of people who, understand, who learn about what the system is that are going to game it and file frivolous lawsuits. And basically, in many cases, my experience has been Employers will simply pay people for a frivolous lawsuit money just to have them go away. And that's not right. So I would encourage you to include consequences in this bill going forward that would impose consequences for employees who want to game the system. I'm all for protecting abuses especially with large employers, which is what we primarily had testimony on here. But when we come down with this, and again, I do appreciate uh, raising that number from zero up to 100. Uh, but when we look at the, the, the direction these bills go, uh, a lot of businesses are going to be closing and moving out of state, especially on the border. Uh, maybe there won't be a Moorhead anymore. It'd just be Fargo. Uh, so, you know, um, that's just my overriding concern and why I bring this, is to bring a little more balance to this. And my question for uh, Senator McEwen is, would she be open to dividing the, I know she's not excited about deleting all the civil rights, or civil actions, uh, but would she be, open to dividing the amendment and at least addressing the automatic inflationary uh, uh, provision that's in the bill. Excuse me, Senator McEwen. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members. Um, Senator Grunhagen, um, I, um, well, on the question of dividing the amendment, um, so if you wanted to, we could do that, but I'm still not going to support either of the divisions. Um, so f first, um, let, I just want to respond to the inflation section. 
with two things. Uh, one, it um, just functionally, what this bill does is put the, um, is make sure that it's in line with the feds in terms of um, being um, increased with inflation. And the other thing that I think is more important to state that when we, when we increase fines or fees with inflation, what we're really doing is making sure that they don't diminish in value over time. We're keeping the fine at the same spot. So what we're doing, we're not changing it. And in fact, we could, the legislature at any time is free to go back and pick that up and see if it's appropriate, see if it's too high, see if it, but the inflationary part seems to me to just make sure that what we establish in statute continues at the actual value that we want it to be at. So I don't want to mess around with the inflation section for those reasons. Um, we've talked a lot about private rights of action and you know how important you know, I, I feel that those are uh, for workers to have the, those remedies um, as a possibility. And I would state also, um, in response to some of the comments that you had about your concerns that workers might game the system. I'm not worried about that um, at all. I, I would respond in part to your concerns with something I've heard you say a lot, which is, yeah, let's see how it goes. And if you come back in a couple of years with at, with all these examples of workers gaming the system, then maybe we'll have an issue that we have to deal with. But I, I don't believe that that will happen. Um, I trust that, and, and actually I know <laughs> that workers who, f who have been wronged in these situations, to actually go through everything you have to go through to seek redress, to seek some sort of remedy and help for the wrongs that you have suffered, you have to jump through so many hoops, even when there are legal protections in place like this. So many hoops. And the power differential between employers and employees is tremendous. Even with a smaller employer, that one single employee compared to the power of the institution of that employer and the business that they have, the power that they have in their business and being in control of wages and benefits and the survival and well-being of all of those their employees, there is an inherent power differential there. What we try to do with worker protection laws is just to take a step toward some measure of empowerment against that inequality so that workers, and it's, it's not equal, even with the protections that are offered in bills like this, employees are still at a disadvantage. But at least they have the tools to seek protection and to seek remedies and redress when they're wronged. Without these protections, they don't even have that. They're just totally dependent on the goodwill of their employer. So um, I, I, I do look forward to our, our work together over these next years, Senator. And if you, if you start getting reports of workers really taking advantage of systems, um, I, I'll, I'll expect to hear about it. Thank you. Senator Grunhagen. Oh, thank you, Ms. Chair. Yeah, thanks for that response. You know, may, here's a suggestion. Maybe we can include a clause in the bill that the private sector's income automatically goes up with inflation so they can afford to pay the fines, okay? I mean, we're always worried about government and uh, keeping up with inflation, but how about the people who pay the bills, okay? They got to keep up with inflation, too. And unfortunately, we don't tend to... Uh, address that. In fact, it's at times it seems like we don't care about that. They just have to cough up the extra money and do with less regardless. So uh, if you could put something in there that we could put an inflation factor on income and profits for the private sector, I'd be more than happy to support that, okay? Second thing is, is there an appropriate place for a lawsuit? Yes, but based on the concerns of the Minnesota Chamber and League of Minnesota Cities and, and the counties, we need to have it focused. 
not so broadly defined that we were throwing the legal net out there just as wide as we can possibly get it to catch as much many people or businesses as possible so we can find out where, where we can get the most money out of it. And unfortunately, that's what some of the verbiage in here, based on their letters, allows. So I would encourage you to work with that. I'd encourage you to consider removing the inflation factor unless you want to add a clause for the private sector so they can keep up, okay, uh, with, with uh, profit and wages. And, um, and uh, so, you know, I know what's going to happen to the amendment. So, I, you know, I don't want to go through an exercise of futility. But I did want to make this point. It all goes one direction. And again, we need to be focused, which I agree with. We, we want to stop the abuses, which again, we all agree with. But this thing just goes totally one direction and allows for frivolous lawsuits and uh, people to game the system without any type of consequence. You know, try, try to put something in there that if you bring a frivolous lawsuit, there's a consequence. Uh, for doing that. And uh, one last example, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I served on public safety in the House, and in my early years, um, there was a lawyer who was going around and getting people to file lawsuits against small businesses that didn't have, that had older buildings that weren't completely up to date as far as disability access. And what they were doing is they were settling out of court and they were making these businesses at the time, if I remember right, cough up between ten and twenty thousand dollars. And we, on a bipartisan basis, passed legislation to put a stop to this. So I know what's in this bill is going to produce those who want to game the system, and we should have some balancing uh, language in there that there's a consequence for doing that. We want employers, don't we? It gives people employee uh, 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 jobs, benefits, and uh, again, I support the abuses. But this just goes way too far in my opinion. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Senator McEwen. I'll withdraw the amendment. Thank you, Senator Grunhagen. Further discussion on the bill? Uh, Senator Wiesenberg? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I guess the, I'm not going to speak about large businesses, but to speak on what Glenn was just talking about is, uh, um, you know, if small businesses didn't treat their employees well, they wouldn't exist. So um, there's an incentive for small businesses to treat their employees well. Uh, otherwise, they would go out of business. Um, small businesses are, are doing what they can to help people, and we need to help them survive because I've heard lots of people say that some of these bills are going to put them under and they're going to go away. Thank you. Uh, sorry, Senator Marty. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I, I care about small employers and large employers, too. I think we want to make sure they thrive. But, um, Senator Grunhagen, you were saying a few minutes ago about inflation adjusting penalties. What about inflation adjusting their ability to make profits and so on? Well, I, I think businesses, I hope they make profits, and I think they're doing well at that, and we don't have a law saying you can't make a profit. So we don't have to change the law on how much profit they can make. But what we have here is, when we talk about some of the, the meat and poultry workers' provisions, the type of abuses that they've been faced, um, I, I really think that there are some outrageous misconduct we've had and mistreatment of workers. And, and I think this is a reasonable and balanced bill to try and get at that. Um, as Senator McEwen in the discussion earlier about how many workers, how large of a meat packing plant should have to comply with this, yeah. I, I wasn't part of any of those negotiations, but apparently Senator Putnam and some of the industry came up with upping the size of the facilities they're exempting, but um, I just keep looking when the increases in inflation for penalties. I, we have people doing some really, really bad conduct and, and seeing that the penalties are locked in place until we adjust them um, some of these penalties haven't gone up for years, and it seems to me um, if these are inflation adjusted on page 44, it's the inflation is more than cut the value in half in the time since we've last raised the penalties. 
So it strikes me as an inflationary increase in penalties is reasonable. But I think, Senator McEwen, I think you have a good bill, and I think it does a lot to address, especially some of the most vulnerable workers. And so I, I, I urge your support for the bill. Senator Grunhagen. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, thank you uh, for that response. And uh, uh, I, we already have a law you can't make a profit. They're called nonprofits. They're HMOs. Their executives make millions of dollars a year, okay? So, uh, again, the private sector has to keep up with inflation, too. People on fixed incomes. And a lot of people are working just to supplement their retirements because of inflation. And yet, Government doesn't seem to care about that. They only care about themselves and get automatic increases. So I urge the author to get rid of that inflation factor. Let them come back to the House and, and the Senate. Maybe we could reduce some fines. Maybe we increase others. But at least we've got some oversight on it rather than just automatic increases. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Darnick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I just wanted to close with uh, thank you, uh, Senator McEwen. It's been good to work with you. And, you know, the time goes by quickly, uh, the work that we've done. And, yes, there's been a lot of good work done here. Um, so I thank you for that. And I just think of the, the first, one of the first times we walked in here and we had a crowd from the, uh, let's see, it was the refinery bill, I believe. And um, just working together and how far we came, like you had mentioned on, well, that bill, the warehouse bill, um, well, actually this one, safe workplace for meat and poultry processing workers, and uh, where we start, and then as we work together, these things do um, come to pretty close, and, we, and my goal is always to get peace in the valley and to bring both sides uh, to the table. Many times I bring the, the pro and the con or one side or the other, and because I come here, uh, I liked... Um, what uh, the former Commissioner Robertson said, that labor and industry, and we as, as was she had said was, I'm the and. Uh, and that's what I want to be, is the and. Uh, that middle one that, dis, you know, just not aside, but we want safe uh, job sites, we want people to go to work and to come home. Uh, I mean, I was, uh, I worked for many different contractors and uh, I, I uh, really appreciate the way they retreated me, and, and when I went home, I, I took a shower. I, it was hard work, but uh, their goal was to, to get us, uh, get the work done, but yet be able to, um, uh, they make a profit too, yeah, so that win-win. That and so uh, as we've gone through some of these bills, as I've mentioned, I know the, the refinery bill has really been, I've worked more behind the scenes on that one, and uh, it's, it's, it's really neat to see that progress, uh, but some of the other ones too. And this safe workplace uh, for meat and poultry, for that started and where it is now, same thing, and Senator Putman, Putnam has been uh, just really gracious and good to work with, and we've talked about this a lot, and uh, he's been very busy, but so appreciate uh, some of the other bills in this are uh, the nursing home, thank you, uh, Senator Pappas, um, and the, the crisis that still we have in the rural areas, and we got to do more, but this is a good start, so thank you for that. Uh, the combat sports, yes, that, that is something that needs to be done, so uh, um, appreciate that work. Uh, so just wanted to thank you for the work, and uh, especially a shout out to our staff that works their tails off to get all these things done, and, and the amendments, and, and uh, I'm not the most organized as Eric has seen, but... <laughs> I'm a construction guy, so I kind of got to have my stuff out, and <laughs> sometimes I can't find what I need. But anyway, especially when you have papers, give me a tool or something. I'm, I'm better at that. But uh, again, it's been great working with each and every one of you here. Um, and, uh, you know, I just reflect on uh, the years past and, and the workers and the work they do and the ones that came here and testified and being able to um, listen and I know what it'd be like to, for me, this, it's hard for me to be up here and as a, a blue collar worker uh, and when they come up and just really appreciate all the testifiers that, and the, the one thing I really appreciate about you is you let them talk. Didn't matter which side where they're on, there wasn't, uh, I mean, um, 
they got to talk and they got to share what they what was really in their heart and I, I really appreciate that about you and how that's that's how I'd run the committee too is I would let people talk and and we up here need to listen and um, and I think that's what we did uh, and um, you know I, I think that's anything else I want to say um, Oh, the one thing I wanted to say was just uh, just a caution again about that being that uh, that and in labor and industry is just to be careful, and that's our concern. Um, sometimes we get accused of being all business. Uh, that's not true. I'm I was a union worker for 22 years, residential carpentry as a non-union guy and a small business owner. So I kind of fit. I see all. So as people are talking, I just really try to connect with them and then try to get to those win-wins on these issues. And sometimes it's really difficult and we all have, have worked through that and, and uh, saw some of those issues. But my caution is, is we're just trying to be careful that, uh, again, it's a, a partnership business, especially small businesses. Uh, the most important thing to me is I had workers was, or employees, was the employee keep them safe, because it costs money if they get hurt. And, and plus, uh, you have that relationship with them, and that would really hurt me if something happened to somebody that I was on the job with me and they were hurt. So we're not against safety, we're not against workers. What we're trying to do is to make sure that we're not, um, that again, that, that spot of those win-wins as much as we can, to be careful that we don't cause businesses to close or to to give up because I, I started a business in 2009, a construction business, mind you, trying to to survive, and the sleepless nights, the hours and hours of work, and all those things that our business owners have. So I really want to be careful with what we legislate and not have those unattended consequences. So. That's, that's my true, uh, what I'm looking for as we've worked through this, and uh, I'm still a little concerned about some of these mandates, uh, but again, I'll, I'll be quiet so others can talk, but uh, thank you, it's been, been good to work with you and everybody here, and so I'm hoping that we can maybe tweak some of these things a little bit. It has been really hard to keep up with the speed, and I think all of us know that, and to try to read and digest all this stuff. Uh, and there's some things in this bill that the economic area that I didn't even touch because I just, I couldn't, I didn't wanna have too much time that I took that others couldn't talk. So um, maybe we can chat with about some of those concerns, but um, with that, I'll let other members talk. So thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Dornick. Senator Pappas. Um. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you from me as well. It's hard to top Senator Dornick. He's so heartfelt, but thank you, Senator McEwen and all the members. Um, of course, I love all my children, but this is my favorite. <laughs> the, um, uh, I do feel like um, uh, that what I think we're trying to do is to create more of an even playing field. And given the fact that um, the corporate sector has had record profits in our country for a number of years, and we really have not paid enough attention to the needs of workers. And you see that in many ways, now that there's a, a labor shortage, people are more appreciative of workers and wanting to bring more workers to the state and to support our workers so they, they stay here and they thrive. Um, now they are asserting more of their well-deserved rights. And, you know, I think the scale has been tipped uh, uh, in our country on the side of the employer, and I would just like to see it come into more of a balance, and I think this bill helps do that. So, thank you. Senator Grunhagen. Oh, thank you, Ms. Chair. Yeah, I think Senator Dornick uh, summarized uh, my position and some of us who have concerns about this bill very, very well. And uh, I would just ask for a roll call on the final vote if one hasn't been asked or if we're not going to do one. I would like to see a roll call on this bill. Thank you. Senator. And a recorded vote if we had three hands. Oh, we, bipartisan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Senator Grunhagen, thank you. You've called for a roll call and it will be recorded somewhere, I forget what it's called. In the journal. <laughs> <laughs> Recorded somewhere, on a tablet somewhere. Um, let's see, we're on to Senator Liskey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, Senator McEwen. 
Um, I know I brought an amendment today that probably frustrated you. I have to show utmost respect. I know none of this is easy. Um, I've, we've worked here a lot. Uh, it's been a lot. It's been very busy. I always like to bring the voice of the opposition because sometimes they need a voice too. Even if that doesn't mean that's what's going to happen, we still have to hear it and we have to listen to it. And so that's what my purpose of my amendment was today. And, and honestly, I've enjoyed working and learning and, and seeing how this committee works. Um, you, you have been very open and honest and allow, allowed us to all express our opinions. Um, so I appreciate all the work you're doing. Again, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, heavy support for employees. I, I've never once, I don't think, spoken against employees in this committee. In fact, I've normally expressed how I do agree that a lot of times there's, there's places where we need to protect them and we need to help them. And in my profession, I, I experience that every day. So it's, it's not something that I take lightly. It's not something that I, I'm out here to cause trouble. I, I just want to express that some of this stuff, I think it does need more work, and it sounds like you're willing to do that. And so I look forward to keep working with you. Thank you. Senator McEwen. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, members. I appreciate very much your kind words and, and also all of the effort that each of you has put into this committee, this session, and um, the thoughtful discussions that we have had, the debate, um, and, um, and your concern when, when we have shared our concerns for Minnesotans. And I think that all of us want to do, in our view, what we feel is best for the people of this state. Sometimes those things don't come together, but sometimes they do. And so it's it's been a good experience um, working with all of you as well. Thank you very much for that. Um, in closing, Mr. Chair, I'd, I again want to thank our staff uh, for this, uh, for their all of their work over this session in this committee, and in particular over this last week, uh, a tremendous amount of work from our fiscal analysis, Eric Olson, from our legal counsel, Carlin Doyle Fontaine, uh, from our committee administrator, Fabian Bean, and also um, from my uh, committee legislative assistant as well, Jack Fisher. Thank you all so much for all of the hours and uh, work that you have put into making this bill and all of the bills we have heard in committee um, uh, very successful, I think, um, over this session. Yeah, I, I just want to leave us uh, with thanks for all of the workers and the advocates. This, this um, final product that we have here that we're moving forward with in the Senate is the result of the work of workers and advocates over years um, to bring some more balance, some more protections to Minnesota workers. Um, and I just want to acknowledge and thank all of those workers, the ones who came to testify, the one who, ones who went to meetings to talk about concerns that they have, the ones who sought out help from union reps about different things that were happening in their workplaces. It takes a lot to get those concerns organized and together and flushed out to end up in a bill like this. And so I just want to thank all of those workers and all of those advocates for the work that this bill represents. Um, I know um, I just wanted to put on the record, this is sort of a sidebar, but um, there are consequences for bringing frivolous lawsuits. Rule 11 sanctions are no joke. Senator Grunhagen, I'd be happy to talk with you about that a little bit more. Um, and um, I also just wanted to um, make a note about um, the inflation pressures as well. Um, Inflation is driven by um, people deciding to raise prices. Um, so we, as, as someone has also said over recent years, some of these industries, and especially some of the ones that we are dealing with in this bill, they've been making record profits, record profits, while we've continued to see these abuses. So again, um, while I appreciate very much, I think it's a very natural thing for people to want to take an even-handed approach to try to say, I'm looking for balance, I'm, I'm seeing um, the pros and the cons, I want to treat these actors as equal. 
what I really want us to acknowledge is that the relationship between employer and employee is inherently unequal. It is inherently unequal. So while I respect um, those who view their role as the and in the labor and industry, I do not see my role as that. And the reason that I don't is that when I look at labor and industry, I see a power differential. And when I do a, a power analysis of who needs help in that situation, in that power dynamic, the workers need a lot more help. And so that is what I am here to try to provide that help to them. And also through doing that to make sure that businesses are able to thrive in our community because people are living good lives. So um, I look forward to all of our work continuing and our good discussion and debate. And um, with that, members, um, I would move that Senate file 2782 as amended um, be recommended to pass and be referred to the Finance Committee. Senator McEwen moves the Senate file 2782 as amended and we'll have a roll call. Final passage of SF 2782, Chair Hostchild. Yes. Senator McEwen. Yes. Senator Dornick. No. Senator Grunhagen. No. Senator Kupek. Yes. Senator Liskey. No. Nope. Senator Marty. Aye. Senator Umu Verbaden. Yes. Senator Pappas. Yes. Senator Wiesenberg. Oh. Six yes, four no. With six yes and four no, Senate File 2782 as amended is recommended to pass and referred to the Finance Committee. Thank you. Thank you, Senator McEwen. And with that, we will adjourn the Labor Committee.